Well, hello there and welcome to the living room of the dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you, Stelfers, for March 1st, the day of artistic sensibilities. That's right. Near the top of the page is a visual representational image of the day of artistic sensibilities. We have us an image of, oh, what could it be? Well, it appears to be uh, some kind of grapes, I would say, though they look a little bit like bowling balls considering the spots on them. Does that speak to the day of artistic sensibilities? Hey, who's to say? Sometimes these things are a little bit enigmatic, and this one, I would say, a little bit so that said not altogether all too important the visual representational image i just like folks to see what i have on the page in front of me so you're part of what's going on off camera if you like that said what is important around these here parts is it's march 1st and hence it's somebody's birthday and so if today is your birthday your day is march 1st i just want to say happy birthday that's right that's what's important wishing you a happy birthday but if this video finds you late i don't know days weeks months whatever the case may happen to be well i hope you had a happy birthday in that circumstance but for everybody else who's joining us randomly or here because you want to celebrate the march 1st birthday i just want to say hello welcome and i hope you enjoy yourself now before i dive in with the birthday redirect something i like to take a few minutes to do and that is a roll some dice that's right this is the diecast birthday broadcast so i like to live up to the namesake but i do so more importantly for synchronicity's sake and here i rolled us a three and a two for a five now what is synchronicity you're probably wondering uh, well my friends as i've heard it told the universe or the higher powers that be will oftentimes put things in our path to help us manifest our goals or our aspirations and so uh, a lot of times we're going through this life you know just going on the commute to work or driving after our errands and a lot of the times we've got the blinders on to what's going on around us and we may see everything but we may not lend them much credence and so with that in mind hey you might just be apt to miss the things the universe is putting down in your path for you all right so the idea here is to somehow take note of those things. And how do we do that? Well, we need some kind of sign, some kind of sign that's mutually agreed upon between us and the universe. Something we can't help but hopefully notice. That's right, your uh, daily numbers there. So that said, uh, you don't have to go with the numbers that I rolled for you. The intention is there. Uh, but it would probably behoove you to get a pair of dice so you can ascribe directional values to number sets as well as time limits with which to go in those directions. You're kind of letting the universe take the wheel and drive here for you, if you like, and see what it might just so happen to show you. All right. That said, then you just pick a place that's maybe near and dear to your heart or some place you want to get out and explore, like the downtown square, maybe, and then see where things drive you. And then, you know, you get out, you take yourself out there and like I said though get those blinders off and you want to do this because you never know the day might also start to take on a little bit of a theme not just your numbers to look out for just anything in general let's go with the visual representational images something random all right something we can pin down definitively your grapes there maybe not just any grapes some bowling ball looking grapes hey maybe you see some kind of artistic installation with a bunch of bowling balls all right so it could be random stuff like that and then bowling balls just seem to keep coming in to your day there that said it could be something random like that so you get off on this first directional value and hey you know what maybe you don't see much of anything by the end of this first time limit that said just take it in stride you're out there getting your steps in right and then maybe just take a step back look around compose yourself see what you see and it might just be something small like you're on or Fifth Avenue or 23rd Street who's to say I would take that as a sign you're on the right path all right it lined up with your numbers there so roll yourself another directional value time limit head on out maybe at this point the end of this run hey maybe you're in front of a building and it just so happens to have that's right uh, 23 in the address again take it as a sign maybe you go in there see what it has to be i don't know maybe it's just like a, a locksmith shop and this guy's like hey how can i help you today nobody else is in there it just smells like grinding oil or cutting oil rather and a bunch of uh, metal shavings hey i'm just here on account of synchronicity you tell them and the old timer's like what are you talking about hey you know what show them this video show them your dice and they'll be like you're crazy all right and you need any keys cut no sir like i said just here on account of synchronicity unless you got some 
some bowling balls for me to check out. <laughs> to say this is a locksmith shop, buddy. That said, uh, you take your time, you head on out, and then what's this? Hey, maybe you crash right into an old friend from college or somebody you haven't seen from work in a long time because maybe you shifted jobs or something. And you get to talking, and they're like, what are you doing out here? Hey, I'm just on account of synchronicity. I'm here trying to liven up my birthday. Oh, I didn't realize it was your birthday. Maybe you again, you show them the dice, show them this video, and they go, hey, you know what? I'm not doing anything. Let's join you there. Oh, okay. Hey, perfect. You know what? Catching up with an old friend. And if you hadn't stopped in that locksmith shop, you might have passed right by him. All right. So the universe is looking out for you, maybe. That's right. And you know what? Maybe they're apt to invite you to dinner uh, just so after they join you on your journey. And what's great about this thing where you bring more people into the fold here, if you, uh, more people are focused on the same thing, you're apt to beget greater results all right uh, i think you get the idea so get out there drum up some synchronicities stack up some coincidences if you like i think they're kind of part and parcel the same thing and if you see taste touch smell into it even just a little bit of the magic i think you're apt to see why i brought it up for you all right that said that's synchronicity in a nutshell let's get on with the read all right your month is march your day is the first your sign is nine to eleven degrees pisces the Pisces one period specifically, and your quality and elements is mutable water. All right, March 1st, the day of artistic sensibilities. Those born on March 1st have a natural feeling for artistic expression of many kinds and a great uh, sensitivity to their environment. They are usually keen appreciators of beauty, and people, nature, arts, and daily life. However, those who take them to be overly fanciful or light-headed will be surprised to find how practical they can be. But though March 1 people usually impose a logical structure that orders their life work, they generally let it all hang out in their private lives. And whether they have it together in a daily situation is a matter of choice. And if they wish, they can be quite relaxed and hence late for an appointment or sloppy with their living space. But equally well, they can be extremely concerned with being on time or doing neat work. And generally, such a choice is made on the basis of how much importance they place on something, not merely on the whims of their mood. Thus, it is less a lack of discipline as it is a relaxed attitude, a refusal to be compulsive. March 1 people are usually very attentive to their personal appearance as well as their surroundings. Whether artists or business people, not only out of aesthetic considerations, but also since they know it to be a part of, an, of their drive for success. An important part, if you like. I missed a word there. And those born on this day who have a business or political orientation know full well how to be charming, diplomatic, and when to push, as well as when not to. Their aesthetic sensibilities are reflected in the elegance with which they accomplish their career tasks. And March 1 people in general feel that they may well... Uh, or that may feel that the way something is done is at least as important as what is being done. And they can be very forgiving to individuals who are impolite, ill-mannered, abrupt, or unkind. And March 1 people like to keep it light, to laugh and to enjoy time in an easy manner. And they do not wish to live with problems, particularly personal problems. In their work, difficulties which arise are met head-on and represent opportunities to evolve. But in their personal lives, few people go through the agonies that March 1 people suffer when things are not going well. Rather than hang in there with what happens or appears to be losing a battle, those born on this day often choose to leave before things become still worse. And unfortunately, however, they often carry the emotional hurt or confusions with them inside, unresolved. March 1 people may have to learn to face their interpersonal problems and work them out with the other person instead of becoming impatient or perhaps rejecting. 
And although highly expressive individuals in such situations, those born on this day could be closing themselves off to the promptings of their own heart. Well, all right. Very interesting birthday breakdown today. I fumbled and stumbled my way through it there in a few places, but it happens on occasion. Uh, it is to be expected with these one-shot-one-take kinds of endeavors. That said, this was a number one day, a sun rulership, if you like. And in a lot of cases, these sun rulership days are very hyper or laser focused. Maybe on the theme of the day, uh, sometimes something kind of closely associated with it. And then they expand out from there as is the focus of the theme. I would say they did so here uh, in no small part in that uh, regard, uh, though I would say it was a little bit more rounded out than some of the other sun rule days where this so happens to occur. Uh, I make mention of that because it's just, it's like the first thing that kind of comes to mind. Some days I miss the fact it's a sun rule day and I'm like, wow, this one was extremely hyper-focused. And so it's just, it comes as a surprise to me when I notice finally it was a sun rule day. Here, uh, this one didn't blow my hair back in that respect, but it was rather hyper-focused. That said, I'd like to provide a little bit of a commentary on the things we just happened to, to hear or read, if you like, uh, so I can make uh, connections with the period at large or maybe days previous. Also, just things I found interesting. So let's dive into a little bit of an analysis, all right, and retread a few things that was brought up in the breakdown. Uh, so once again, March 1st, the day of artistic sensibilities. Uh, you're said to have a natural feeling for artistic expression and a sensitivity to your environment. And the reading claims you possess an innate appreciation for beauty in the likes of people, nature, art, as well as daily life. Uh, but you're also a particularly practical person which may fly in the face of other people's presupposed assumptions of someone similarly focused. Uh, having said that, the reading points out that you may be rather loose in your approach to life, all right? To say relaxed, unorganized, late to appointments, and just overly relaxed about things in general, depending upon how important they are to you or how much importance you uh, ascribe to any given concern. Pretty interesting, I thought. Uh, but the opposite can also be said for those things that you do find important, all right? Uh, mention of your appear, uh, appearance in such regards is also mentioned, uh, as it uh, may not all be focused on aesthetic, but uh, how it advances you in your personal endeavors. Uh, to this end, you're said to be well aware of the importance of charm and diplomacy in the political spectrum, if you like, but I'm sure that carries over wherever. Uh, and you know when to drive hard and to otherwise cruise, all right? And you know the value of quality work. Uh, and you brook no truck for people of poor comportment, or i.e. behavior. And you're said to enjoy yourself, keep things light, but be averse to problems. But when they do arise, you, know, you chase them down and you see them not just for things that need fixing, but also as opportunities for improvement. Uh, what else were I just missed my place here yeah. uh, place for him uh, so interesting uh, however the uh, personal relationships uh, the same may not be said or hold true as the reading claims you may choose to abandon what you see as a losing proposition and while seemingly surprising to this end uh, there seems to be somewhat justifiable caveat in doing as much if you are particularly susceptible to suffering and uh, agonies that others may not perceive. It said you carry those hurts with you long afterward. Uh, emotional hurts, uh, the reading claims you suffer even after having left, like I said. All told, quite the fascinating day. Uh, no certain amount of, uh, no uncertain amount, rather, uh, amount of surprises and opportunities for glaring generalities to arise, which are then very quickly rebuked, I would say, uh, and then that rug pull with the personal relationships to make it pretty interesting. You know, sometimes they've been doing that. They bring up things where you're like, okay, I'm getting a good general idea of what this individual is all about. And then they, boom, they quick swing the door shut. Because you know, it might be with regard to a career, as it was here. You're real committed, find the problems, evolve past them, take them to be opportunities to evolve. But then the personal relationships things come up, comes up and, and you might just be so apt to leave. Pretty interesting. And I would say it actually occurred on a few other days in this period too. So you're not alone in that respect. 
Uh, that said, that's been your uh, birthday breakdown. Let's move on to your numbers and your planets. All right, let's see what we got to do here. I brought up it was a sun rule day. I don't typically do that uh, out the gate. So let's dive into it here. Those born on the first of the month are ruled by the number one and the sun. And people born on the first usually like to be first. And those ruled by the number one are typically individual, highly opinionated, and eager to rise to the top. The sun symbolizes strong creative energy and fire, which should be kept flowing steadily rather than allowed to flare out of control. Coupled with Neptune, the ruler of Pisces, a sun influence can make for marked romanticism and unconventionality. Did I say that right? Unconventionality. <laughs> a little bit different. And perhaps emotional confusion. There we go. In March 1, people must beware of adopting an ambivalent posture, which sends others mixed signals. All right. By and large, this was a bit of a copy-paste job. They were just taking things over from the other sun rulership days and kind of putting them together there. They did personalize it there at the tail end for you, kind of brought things home a little bit more. Um, that said, I just like to make note of as much so you kind of know if they really drill down on having to uh, break you down, the enigma that is you. Uh, here, you got a lot of the same said uh, qualities that generally comes through with not just a sun rule day, but also Neptune. In any event, I might be burning down everything I have to say in the notes, so let's dive in, shall we? The number one in the sun for a desire to be first in your uh, eagerness to rise to the top and a penchant to be highly opinionated individual. Uh, sun rule days typically very hyper focused insofar as how the breakdown relates their personality, like I said, uh, and usually pervades their lives and how it can manifest. Uh, so this artistic expression there. I uh, hear this was one of the more rounded sun rule days, like I said, uh, considering all the different conventions that your highly individualized character explores and just as soon seemingly denies. Uh, and thus you may owe in no small part to the watery planet Neptune for that, all right, uh, which rules over dreams and visions and lends one to high ideals. Uh, and a magnetic influence is said to be uh, kind of baked into Neptune influences, uh, one that helps you dissolve rigid and absolute natures, as said elsewhere in the book. Uh, but when coupled to the sun, traits of emotional confusion, like they said. Uh, also unconventionality and marked romanticism. So not necessarily like I'm a romantic in a relationship, but that high ideal kind of romanticism. Kind of, I always think of like the Victorian era period and just like the Enlightenment era of you know, philosophy and such. Uh, traits that I would say are outlined all too well in the breakdown now. All right, you're coming after things loose and relaxed, but then you'll dial it in if it has importance to you. I'd say that's a bit of a romantic kind of a high ideal there. In certain, uh, in certain camps there. Uh, but having said that, that's been your numbers and your planets. So let's move on to your tarot. That's right. One of the more eclectic of the new age metaphysical ideologies. But hey, it's here in the book. Sometimes we can make further connotations with what was mentioned in the breakdown. Maybe, uh, you know, glean a little bit of value in, in, on top of that. That said, uh, you know, a lot of us don't ascribe to such things, say myself either. I don't really know what to make of it. But hey, it's here in the book. Uh, we can just see what it has to say and then leave it there when we're done. So let's dive in. First card of the Major Arcana is the Magician, who symbolizes intellect, communication, information, as well as magic, naturally. And over his head is an infinity symbol, which in some tarot decks also takes the form of a hat, um, and in others, a halo. Many interpretations may be drawn, one of which is that the magician recognizes the cyclical and unending nature of life and is empowered by this understanding. The positive traits suggested by this card include diplomatic skill and shrewdness, but negatively, a lack of scruples and opportunism all right uh by and large another copy paste job one that uh, one thing i find pretty interesting about this uh, respective card is that they say one interpretation that one can draw from this it's always that interpretation so it's kind of funny that they always mention that 
Uh, that said, let's dive back into the notes here. Uh, the magician, symbolizing intellect, communication, information, and magic. All right, for uh, rec reconciling the, or recognizing rather, the cyclical nature of life and being empowered with this knowledge. Uh, which if you have an inherent draw towards recognizing and observing the beauty in things, uh, you probably can't help but learn from such things, I would argue. Uh, positive traits of diplomatic skill and shrewdness, uh, which is defined as clever awareness and practical matters, if you didn't know. I always have to look it up. I always forget. It sounds like a negative, uh, which I would say is quite adamantly referenced in the breakdown. All right, the negatives of scruples and opportunism. Uh, the scruples I picked up on, too, in the breakdown, particularly with things that you don't ascribe importance there and difficult relationships there but insofar as the opportunism uh, you know i didn't really pick up on that so much in the breakdown but i would say that's just part and parcel uh, with being eager to rise to the top all right so just be mindful of that trait that they said you don't like uh, ill-mannered or ill-behaving individuals yeah you might take that into uh, consideration if you're apt to try and maybe try to take part in some kind of opportunity that may be at the uh, disadvantage of someone else a little bit of that opportunism that you don't want to be a hypocrite in those respects i would uh, assume in any event that's been your tarot let's move on to your health all right your health here let's see what kind of individual you are in those respects those born on March 1 tend to ignore the warnings of their body and thus their health needs. And they often take an easy attitude toward diet and exercise, which on the whole is healthy, but must be sure to get proper nutrition and visit a doctor for occasional checkups. Because they have good appetites and enjoy eating, particularly when food is aesthetically served, uh, they should take a personal interest in culinary matters. Sensuous, their needs to touch should be expressed in affectionate play, and perhaps also through massage. March 1 people need plenty of sleep, not only for rest, but because their imaginative dream life is usually active. Interesting. Or unusually active, rather. All right. Let's, let's say the words right, buddy. That's right. Okay. What I have to say here about your health. Okay. Uh, you may ignore your health needs, they said, and warnings, uh, health needs and warnings, and may be rather laxed with regard to exercise and your diet, ostensibly until you abs uh, ascribe it some kind of personal importance, all right? Uh, an interest in culinary is recommended for you, considering your appreciation for plating, all right? Uh, which is a common through line with regard to the culinary influences ever since maybe the Capricorn period. But this plating aspect, that's a new one. That hasn't come up before. Uh, there's also a theme of a sensuous nature kind of baked into uh, Aquarius and Pisces here, and a need for touch and physical expression also. Uh, rest is also common for Neptune uh, rulership days, uh, but it gets sporadic mention. It's not uh, always baked into the mix here, though I would say it probably in no small part uh, kind of runs throughout the whole period. But it gets mentioned for you specifically, so maybe take note. Uh, and that also goes for the dream time aspect too. Not often mentioned, but again, typically only comes up for Neptune ruled days. So once again, maybe take note, make sure you get your dream time for that imagination. That said, the, the health entries, they typically like to drill down on a quality of exercise and also very specific foods to incorporate into your diet. Uh, it's been a bit of a through line since Capricorn that they kind of ditch all of that. I don't know why, but so I've just been trying to pick up uh, and piece together when they do mention it so I can relate it to folks. And the uh, Pisces body area is the lymphatic system as well as the, the feet and the toes and the lower legs, if you like. Uh, so I've been recommending to folks to cut out dairy and dairy fats because the lymph system you know, it produces a little bit too much mucus with that stuff. And also you want to get your exercise in so you can keep your lymphatic system moving and grooving because uh, we don't have a secondary heart like some other animals where it's just chiefly there to circulate that lymph. 
Here our lymph nodes are buried in muscle groups, so when you move around, you're squeezing them and you're getting things to flow. So I would say exercise uh, for no, you know, if for no better reason than to do that, so spe especially since that's your body area there. So uh, cut out the dairy and get those lymph nodes moving. All right, so in any event, that's been your health. Let's move on to some advice. All right, your advice. Don't always look for the door. All right, build up the aggressive side of your nature and find what really suits you realistically. But beware of being swallowed up by your role. Okay, very interesting here. A um, little bit, uh, I don't know if it's redundant. A lot of these advice, uh, the advice these days has been kind of redundant. Uh, let's dive in with the, what I had to say about what they had to say. I had to write it in the, in the book here. So bear with me. I'm, my writing's tiny. I might get off track here. Let's get into it here. They say, don't always look for the door. I'm assuming with the personal relationships there. Uh, so the reading claims that you carry emotional hurt with you long after leaving. All right. So I would say maybe give things a little bit more of a chance than maybe your instinct is telling you to. All right. Uh, maybe more than you want to, too. So at least you uh, can try and realize such things. You know what? Uh, you know, and if, you, if you know that about yourself, I'm going to carry that emotional hurt. Maybe if you're on the fence about sticking around, at least you can work through some of that stuff before you end up leaving. Uh, so uh, what else do I have to say? Don't forget communication. That's huge, all right? Uh, it's, it's always, it's missing with a lot of folks, I would say, uh, myself included in that matter, because it's weird when you're around people you're close to. You can't communicate with them at a certain point about certain things. Sometimes it's easier to talk to a stranger, right? Uh, that said, to also be open to hearing individuals and being open in general, all right? That gets mentioned quite a bit, so why not include it here also since we're on the subject? Uh, build up that aggressive side, they said. Uh, very interesting. You may be a little too easy of manner, all right? A little too loosey-goosey, as they said. Uh, <laughs> they didn't put it in those words. Uh, though I didn't necessarily pick up on this necessarily being a problem, but I could see it being a facet of your more uh, lack of scruples area there, uh, you know, that type of attitude with things. Uh, so bring a little bit more discipline to things, perhaps, all right? Uh, and this is something that gets brought up a little bit, be more aggressive. I think it's because Neptune folks tend to kind of have their head up in the clouds with their high ideals, and being a little bit more assertive kind of brings you back down. It kind of grounds you a little bit. Uh, what else do we have here? Find what suits you realistically, they said, all right? Mr. or Mrs. Easy going, uh, but they don't but don't get swallowed by your role. Okay, why do they say that? I said a lot of people in this period are completely committed to a cause. It's a little bit of an anomaly that this didn't get mentioned for you here. Uh, so you, you and maybe one or two other individuals, this doesn't get brought up. Uh, so uh, it's, an, it's almost an innate characteristic with those folks. And so it's surprising it's not here. Uh, but uh, high ideals are still baked into the mix. And so there might be a little bit of a natural draw or inclination for you to do as much. But if you do, don't get completely absorbed by it. All right. And with a lot of these folks, ever since Capricorn, that's been coming up with the commitment to cause. And they sacrifice all else for that cause or the job or their endeavors. The personal relationships fall by the wayside. And a lot of times they get warned not to let that happen because uh, later on in life they might find themselves alone all right probably don't want that uh, but who's to say just something to keep note of uh, so uh, let's see uh, but it's good to have a pursuit otherwise all right let's say it's perfectly okay to go after that just uh, be mindful of it even if it's not a cause just be mindful you don't get completely absorbed in it that said that's been your advice so let's move on to your meditation that's right it's your birthday you get something to think about it's just for you here all right here we go an aesthetic person sees beauty in the ordinary all right interesting i don't seems doesn't seem as enigmatic as some of these other uh, meditations but hey you know what who's to say maybe it is uh once again an aesthetic person sees beauty in the ordinary all right i would say it fits you perfect though considering the theme that said your birthday your meditation i'm not going to try to throw my spin or interpretation on as much outside of what i've already done don't want to influence it for you one way or the other it's your birthday your meditation <laughs> 
That said, that having been related, your meditation, let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. That's right. Let's hold up the objective mirror and see where you got the girth and where you otherwise may be a little more atrophied or deflated within the metaphor, all right? So you don't like to exercise much, so that may be baked into the bargain there. All right, here we go. Your strengths. Oh, we knew this one. You're artistic. That's right. You're technical. And you're ambitious. All right, there's that sun coming into the mix. But your weaknesses. Oh, all right. Let's to hold up that objective mirror once again. To flip it to the side that blows up your face and shows off the things you might be a little more superficially insecure about within the metaphor there. That's right. Your weaknesses. You only got two here. Interesting. You're irresolute. That, that might be a first that's popped up. Irresolute and escapist. Interesting. That one too might be highly unique. You know, a lot of times these things pop up and uh, what's interesting is like a month or two back, one of these days, impulsive popped up as a strength, but the very next day it traded to a weakness. I'm thinking to myself, what's the disconnect here? Why would that trade off so quick and also in such proximity to one another? And I think it just depends first and foremost on the individual and the personality, but also the situation, I would argue. What's the situation? How can that be a strength or a weakness? So that said, I also like to argue that our strengths are going to help us overcome our weaknesses. If there's something we want to improve upon, you're artistic, you're technical, ambitious. I would say you're going to cook up some interesting uh, way of approaching it, maybe with, uh, you know, some beauty in the mix. I don't know. Uh, aesthetically focused there, right? Technical, you're going to get down to the nuts and bolts of the problem in one way of thinking. And you're ambitious. Hey, you're apt to strike out at it as if it's some grandiose challenge. Maybe the most important challenge of all some self-awareness, improving yourself. That said, your weaknesses, irresolute, escapist, uh, you know, how can these be strengths? I would say irresolute, I'm, I'm thinking that means you're not willing to give up on things or, um, <laughs> or you know, that, you, that you're dedicated to. Uh, I have to look up the definition there. I'll, I'll leave it in the description there for you. So my, my uh, take on this might be completely wrong, but it leads me to think about abandoning folks that's probably the chief weakness that i saw come up there so it makes me think my idea with the definition is just completely wrong maybe you're not committed enough because resolute means yeah you can irresolute you're not committed enough all right how do we improve upon that well, we just got to focus on it but how is that a strength interesting how do i make a case for that you know what some things we got to be cool with coming in and out of our lives all right it's uh sometimes we hold on to things too dear i would say now, it's interesting there's another case to be made that you don't let go of it because you're carrying that emotional hurt with you later i don't know you should have held on to it a bit more so that you could have reconciled those things perhaps i don't know but yeah maybe just do some self-analysis and how do we improve these things maybe just hold on to them better but again sometimes as a strength there's things we need to let go of in this life so if you're easy going with that hey i can let it roll off my back pretty easy I would say that's a strength. Just don't let it get out of hand, all right? Have the uh, knowledge and foresight to see when that didn't work for you in the past and think about the present situation. Uh, escapist, how is that a strength? Hmm, again, you're able to get out of things real easy. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, but I think what they're trying to say is like you're, you're just diving into your own world too much to get away from things. So you've got to be careful with that. Uh, but it is nice if we can turn off from the outside world once in a while. And I would say with the other days in this period, they don't do it enough. So that might be a strength in, uh, in your camp there, I would say. But again, we got to show moderation and the right amount of foresight and judgment with such things. Uh, I've had a hard time with a lot of these making my cases these past few days, but hopefully it took some kind of value from it. If anything, just watching me struggle, the entertainment value baked in in that respect. That said, that's been your strengths and your weaknesses. So let's move on to those born on this day. And when we get into those born on this day, not only do we get to see who shares your company, but something I like to do is look at it from the perspective of figuring out our passions. Too often I get out in the world and meet folks, ask them what they do, more importantly, if they like it, and they don't. And I would say it's, it's chiefly just because they haven't had an opportunity to put in the time, the work, and the effort that's required to figure those things out. Because sometimes that's what it takes. 
uh, not just for a passion, sometimes just to figure out what we like. And uh, I think it's important that we have something in our lives that we can drive after a purpose, if you like, so that we can find something fulfilling in life. All right. We're here for just a short amount of time. So we might as well be doing something that we get fulfillment from. So if you don't have that in your life, this I, I think this is the perfect opportunity to try to, I don't know, stir up those fires. All right. You got that creative passion for you amongst or more so than a lot of other folks. You probably have that just baked in. I want I want to find something fulfilling, all right? And so this here, I'm just putting the bug in the ear to try and do so, all right? It's a reminder if you like. But maybe we can drum up some inspiration from the things other folks have accomplished. So let's keep that in mind as we dive in with those born on this day. All right, we start off with Sandro Botticelli, the Italian Renaissance Florentine master painter. And fortunes fell with uh, Medicidis, uh, I don't know how to say this one, his fortunes fell with Medicinis and died in poverty. Uh, we have Hans Hoffmann, a German-American abstract expressionist painter. Here we go, that theme of the artist. Let's see how far it goes. We also have Oskar Kokoschaska, an uh, Austrian expressionist painter and a writer. Robert Lowell, Pulitzer Prize winning poet of Lord Weary's Castle. Another artist. We also have Howard Nemirov, Pulitzer Prize winning poet. Uh, Itzhak uh, Rabin, an Israeli prime minister and defense force head. Also mastermind of the Seven Day War and signed the Washington Peace Accord with the PLO's Yasser Arafat. He may have been an artist, who's to say, but that's not what he's remembered for. We also have Ralph Ellison, an essayist and novelist of The Invisible Man. Never finished that one, got through a little bit of it. We also have Glenn Miller, the band leader, arranger, and a trombonist. All right. Harry uh, Belafonte, a singer and film actor. Roger Daltrey, lead singer of The Who and a film actor. We also have David Niven, a film actor. Alberta Hunter, a blues jazz singer and sang at the age of 89. And it says biography is Alberta Hunter, a celebration of the blues. We also have Ron Howard, the TV actor and director, Richie Cunningham in Happy Days, and also directed Cocoon and Backdraft, Apollo 13, amongst others. We also have Catherine Bach, a film actress, Hans Va. Uh, Hans Vaughn, rather, uh, Achen, A-A-C-H-E-N. The names get me here, folks, if you hadn't noticed. A German, uh, what do we got here? Mannerist painter, it says. We also have Lytton Strachey, a British bluesenberry writer and responsible for a work by the name of Eminent Victorians. We also have Jacques Rivette, a Rive, perhaps, a French film director of Pont du Nord. We also have Robert Conrad, the TV actor of Wild Wild West fame, and the, uh, the show about Pappy Bowington with the, uh, the Black Sheep, I think it was. That's right. We also have Ralph Gleason, a jazz journalist and a critic. And finally, Joan Hackett, a film actress. For sure, a lot of people that were artists. Interesting. Sometimes the theme doesn't seem to line up within the rhyme there. Uh, that said, I know it's a big ask, tall order to take inspiration from other folks in uh, pursuits and ostensible passions. But hey, like I said, maybe just putting the bug in the ear help you stir up the fires. Because if there's anything I can wish for you on your birthday, it's that you're carving out time so that you can put in the energy figuring out your passions that said i butchered a bunch of names there so let's make up for it on my side of things it's not done in malice it's just hooked on phonics isn't the best tool used to pronounce names there especially the french russian and pretty much anything in general all right so in any event uh, that has been those born on this day which essentially rounds out your birthday reading i know you wanted more didn't you no this is going long enough right Who's to say? Pick your poison. Uh, that said, uh, like I said, essentially rounds out your birthday reading. Except to say, your season is winter, your sign once again is Pisces, of the Pisces 1 period specifically. And your quality and element is mutable water. And this has been March 1st, the day of 
artistic sensibilities from the secret language of birthdays by gary goldschneider and you stelfers i have an affiliate link for this book down in the description right above a personal message i like to put together for the birthday boys and girls ladies and gents there so if you're interested take a look there this thing makes an excellent coffee table book if you're apt to maybe hold a party host a party want to get the want to get the conversation flowing for better or for worse this thing's going to get it done. It's exactly how it was introduced into my world, and I feel like I'm all the better for it. Uh, that said, book having been related, that's not what's important here. What's important here, like I said at the top, wishing you a happy birthday. So once again, happy birthday, all right? And for everybody else that joined us, hey, I hope you enjoyed yourselves, took something of value. I, I take so much value from just any given day. There's always something to be gleaned from as much, right? Even if you're just learning lessons that other people have to go through, all right? Uh, but you know what? I hope to see you on your birthday is what I'm trying to get at. So head on over there if you're interested. Uh, that said, I just want to thank you all for the pleasure of your time. It's been a privilege to share your birthday with you, birthday boys and girls. So I just wanted to relate as much. All right, now lest I forget before I take us out here, that's right, your daily numbers. All right, get out there. Let the world show you, or the world, the universe, higher powers that be, pick your poison, salt to taste. Let it show you that it's with you on your path. And if you see, taste, touch, smell to it, even just a little bit of the magic, the uh, coincidences, the synchronicities, hey, I think you're apt to see why I brought it up, all right? You should be doing something fun on your birthday anyway, all right? Outside of just getting your steps in, though it sounds like you need to do that as well, all right? So once again, happy birthday and take care of yourselves, all right? And don't give up too quick on things, all right? Especially the personal relationships there, that's right. Happy birthday.